Hello. Good to see you. Good to be with you. So this shifting practice that I'm going to share with you today is it's not actually a new concept for me. It's something I've been working with for several years, but I've learned to simplify it. And um, anytime I can simplify something, that's a good thing. It does. This doesn't negate um, the standing as awareness video or the practices in there by any means. Those work. They work very well. Use them if they work for you. Um, they can't, can't, almost can't not work for you. The principles that we're talking about here, this is not something that you need to believe in. Just like lifting weights. I mean, if you lift weights, you'll get muscle. It doesn't make any difference what you believe. You can believe against the fact this will never work, it'll never work, and it'll work. By the same token, even though I'm going to give you a little explanation, you don't really need the explanation in order to have this work for you. If, if you show somebody this and you give them no explanation at all and they use it, it'll work for them. But the good thing about having some context about a practice is that this, this whole living method will, starts out with waking you up and then we move into the clearing up process and we're building a foundation today today is the foundation for tomorrow today this moment is the foundation for the next right so when we have context that's being embodied as it's being learned if it's if it's not just going to the head but it's actually going into your experience then you're way way up in the game way, way ahead of the game. And we will tend to embody something that we know about, something that we more or less understand. Not that anybody understands what we're doing here. I don't understand it. But I know that it works, and that's my job is to report to you what does work. So the Standing as Awareness video talks about bringing you to greater clarity right here, right now, by having you notice the truth. That's, that's what it does. That's the same thing this does, but we can utilize it yet more easily even than then. It's something that we're, we're going to do several minutes of it. I did. I was in a clarity session yesterday with a client. We did about a half hour of it, and it just moved both of us quite a bit. So you can do it for however long you want, but I want you to understand that there's no law that says that you can't take the first minute of this and do it as a practice. For those of you who are doing 10 minute meditations, this is a great practice. Now this is an open eyed meditation. Doesn't make any difference. The, uh, we're not, because, because when we close our eyes, it's easy in a lot of ways. But by the same token, it's, it's easier to tell ourselves stories, too. So with our eyes open, we have less of a tendency to tell ourselves a story and more of a tendency to notice the truth. So this, you can use the first minute, you can use the first, first 30 seconds, you can use the first 15 seconds, you can use the first five seconds. Probably use the first second. I don't know if it could be done quite that fast, but it could certainly be done in a couple of seconds. But five is good. And all we're doing here in this practice is we're simply noticing the truth. There is no, I have a bunch of practices that people can do. I, I always list them and people pick out what they like, right? I mean, it's, it's like giving them a menu. You, know, you go into the restaurant and they say, well, here's our potato. <laughs> You know, that's pretty good, but how often are you going to go to that restaurant, even if it's a great potato? So I uh, offer you a menu of practices. You want to do the ones that you resonate with until you don't resonate with them anymore. When they cease to be effective, find another one. That actually has to do with this teaching, too. Use this teaching as long as it's effective for you. If it ceases to be effective for you, then don't, you know, fret about it. Just 
Go find another teaching that you do resonate with. That's fine. I mean, there's plenty of room here for everybody. I'm not trying to, to bring everybody into the Fred corner, but I am trying to bring in the people who resonate with this corner. I'm trying to bring them in absolutely as far as I can. And this is a very skillful teaching for doing that. And this is a very skillful method. Part of the living method. What we're doing today is having you notice the truth in the absence of language. I'm going to take away your languaging skills, your ability to speak language, your ability to talk to yourself with language. That's the most important. I will be languaging some during the, the practice, but it's just to guide you, not to disorient you. It doesn't negate anything I'm saying. It's just awakeness is here to help you find the truth more readily, more easily, more deeply. So what you are is beyond language. What you are is prior to language. Language is a tool that occurs in the dream for dreaming purposes and it is strictly of the dream there's nothing factual about languaging languaging is is the initial expression of duality or can be and in, in the sense that you know the Tao Te Ching says that the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao what do they mean by that? Well, they mean exactly what they say. So when I look up here and I say painting, this is a dream character pointing to a dream painting in a dream. Dream phenomena. But with, 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 with dream Fred observer. There's not, I mean, just in truth, I'm sorry, but there's no painting there. Right? There's no light there. There's no book or anything else over there. There's, there are these appearances. And these appearances are appearing, appearing where? Well, if they're just oneness, then they got to be appearing within oneness, don't they? And since there's just one of you, would you ever have a need for language? No. That's why your true nature is silence. It's also why silence can be the best teaching. Is because it's 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 that heart to heart awakeness to awakeness where there's no distortion. Or less would be a better way to put it. Far less distortion. There, your true nature is silence. Your true nature is stillness. So we're not saying that you are still, because that kind of makes you out into a noun. Do you see how that works? And you're not a noun. You are this stillness upon which all this noise of the world is occurring. And languaging is a core culprit in bringing about a sense of duality. There is no duality. There's never been a duality. There's never going to be a duality. But oddly enough, we all have a sense of duality, don't we? And it's just a matter of degree. There can be a light sense of duality, like here where there's a I'm giving a talk because there's no reason for me not to, I don't have to believe that in order to do it, but it's, there's still a sense of Fred here. It's not very profound. I don't believe in it, but I can't tell you that it's not here and nor it's, it's here. And guess what? It's not a worry because I don't believe it. And what we're going to learn to do is not just to come to clarity in the absence of language, 
but we can come to the point where we can use language without believing it. And that's the perfect way to interact in the dream, is to use language without believing it. In other words, you are then free as a dream character to use the tools of the dream to better your experience in the dream, better everybody's experience in the dream. If you're, you know, altruistic, all of that's fine. You'll notice that you, that you can only do what you do. You can't not do it. Since there's one of you, you don't use language. As that Tao Te Ching says, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. And guess what? When I name something, I invent it. In the absence of language, what I have in the absence of language, I have nothing. I don't even have a me. Me is language. There is a sense of individuality here. There, and there is no individuality. But there's, a, there's only oneness, right? It can't be oneness plus these individuals. These individuals are, uh, in essence, they are illusions that appear within you. Or even more accurately, they appear upon you. You are the, you are the screen of truth, and all these illusions play out on top of you. And what we're going to do today is learn to, to, to unwind the illusion of language, because in the absence of language, there's no dream. No language, no world. No world, no problem. In the absence of language, there's no Fred. In the absence of Fred, there's no problem. In the absence of a problem, there's no Fred. In the absence of language, there is no Fred. In order for there to be a problem, there has to be a comparison. And that's what language is very, very good at doing. It's comparing this to that. This individual thing with that individual thing. And it compares my expectations with my results, and I'm noticed I'm usually unhappy with those. Even if they're spectacular, they could have been better, should have been better, whatever. So let's do this practice. Just get comfortable, no, no reason not to. Don't worry about getting any in any specific exotic position. Actually don't care um, how your spine is, although I've, I've had enough Zen training to report that, you know, if you, you're, you're more likely to stay alert with a relatively straight spine. But you can do this on the couch as far as I'm concerned. Whatever works for you. Because the ultimate process does not rest on what this unit does. Because shifting practice is not for this unit. Shifting practice is for you. And you are not a unit. And that's one of the things that shifting practice helps you to see. And what you're going to find out is that you can shift from Samsara to truth, from illusion to truth, in the snap of a finger. What I want to tell you is that frequency is more important than duration. So doing this practice a lot is better than doing it once a week for a long time or something like that, right? Although you can do it as long as you want as long as you hold, hold within it. 
and it'll have an effect. This effect is to help you be clearer now, not to be clearer, clearer later, but I want you to understand that you will be clearer later if you do this a lot now. It's just the way it works. What actually clears us up is exposure to clarity itself. That's the reason that sessions with me work. That's why these videos work. That's why people like my writing is that you can, you know you're being exposed to your own clarity. You're not being exposed to Fred's clarity. There's no Fred and he has not one bit of, of clarity. He can't because he doesn't exist. There's only your clarity. And that's always what we're trying to see is your own clarity. And there's only one thing going on and you're it. So right now, Get comfortable and drop language. Drop the use of language temporarily. You'll find out it's really not that difficult to suspend it. Again, I'll be talking because I'm teaching. But I'm not believing my language. It's just happening. I'm not even doing this language. It's just happening. So it's not distracting me. And given that it is what it is, it's not going to distract you either. Stop allowing yourself to use language to talk to yourself. If I don't use language, if I don't use names, if I do not name this how many things am I looking at? If I don't pick out certain shapes or colors, even that's languaging. That's red, that's square, languaging. If I just look without judgment, without, uh, without preference, if I just look with no agenda, I have no idea what I'm looking at. If you tell me I'm looking around my room, that's languaging. Room is languaging. I don't know. And I, there can't be a room unless there's no room. Because there can't be a room without, about, without comparison. And in what is, there's no comparing. There's no alternative. The funny thing about what is, is that it just is. And it's this. And if you say, I see many objects, then you're languaging. That doesn't make them, that, mean, that doesn't make that real. It just means that you may believe it's real. They may believe that you can get a lot of agreement on that, but it doesn't make it real. Because I can promise you that it's not. Not that you need to believe my promise. Try it yourself. Don't believe my promise. But if you've been drawn here, then yes, put some faith here. Why not? Who cares? So what if I'm wrong? You'll find out if I, that you'll find out I'm wrong, and you'll and you'll know why, and you'll go on and do the right thing next. But until that time, until I am proven wrong, why don't you just have a little faith 
in this teacher. I really have helped hundreds and hundreds of people around the world wake up. They were people just like you and me, ordinary people, who came to recognize an extraordinary truth. In the absence of language right now, There's no me, there's no you, and that's true. Imagine right now that you're an infant. You're a newborn infant. And look out as right now, actually take on the persona of a newborn infant and look. What do infants see? What are infants just chock full of? Wonder. Infants are chock full of wonder. Because there's no infant there from the infant's perspective because there's no division, there's no separation. In other words, there's no naming. It doesn't have a name for any of this, and in the absence of language, the experience of the infant is oneness. And it's not because the infant is stupid that it is having an experience of oneness, it's because it's untrained. It has not yet been trained out of seeing oneness. See, oneness is the default position. It can't be anything other than oneness. Truth is the default position. When we're trying to get to truth, we don't need to create anything. What we need to do is strip away some of the crap that we put on top of the truth. And then we take that infant's bare, open, curious, wondrous mind, and we begin to just fill it full of concepts, right? Mama, daddy, you, him, that, there. Mm -hmm. other, me, until they just can't see it anymore. They're still not, they're still having an experience of oneness, but it's not a conscious experience of oneness. It's an unconscious experience of oneness. That's what the rest of the world's having right this moment. An infinitesimal percentage of us are having a conscious experience of oneness. and everybody else is having an unconscious experience of oneness. I know that I'm awake. People who don't know that they're awake do not experience the fact that they actually are awake. Not knowing you're awake, you, your experience of not knowing you're awake is identical to the experience of not being awake. Drop language. Just look around. But don't look from the unit. Don't be the Fredness that's looking at the oneness out there. Within the truth of unity. Fred is fiction. Fredness is individual, that, that individuality is fiction. There's a sense of individuality that's been born here. When oneness morphed into this particular shape on this planet in with the everything else lined up like it does, what it happens is that it experiences itself there's a sense of individuality. There's no truth to it, but that's our experience. That's our, our sense. And we, when we, and if it feels true to us because we're thinking we're this. And as a result of my thinking that I'm this, then it's me against the world. 
But see, this can't be outside of oneness. Drop languaging. Look around. What do you see? If you know what you're looking at, you're languaging. And I'm asking you not to. Don't talk to yourself. This thing is capable of going to off for sure, at least a little while. Suspend this thing. Just let it, just, you can, it won't even really resist it much, just for a minute. Suspend that language. In the absence of language, there's no me. In the absence of language, there's no world. In the absence of language, there's no problem. In the absence of language, there are no objects. In the absence of language, there's not even space. Just this. There's not unconditioned space versus conditioned space. There's just this. What is this? I have no idea. And I, I can sense, and maybe you can have the same sense. I certainly have the strong sense. It comes as a knowing but I, I can just say that there's a strong sense that this is me. So what am I? I don't know. Now, Ramana and I could talk about, I know who I am in the way that he was asking it, but I don't know what that is, see? So I can say I, I know who I am, but I don't know what that is. And this is actually simply not other than me because there's no other. I'm not saying that manifestation equals me. And I'm saying it can't be other than me because there's just one thing going on. Drop language. And let me ask you a question. Is there any time in the absence of languaging? Does time exist? We couldn't find space in the absence of language, and I don't think you'll be able to find any time either. Time is just more concepts. It's comparing the distance between this and that. There's no this and there's no that. There's only, well, there is a this, but it's just this. There's a this, but there's not a that. There's nothing that this compares to because there's nothing to compare it to. You just have to see this for yourself, and you do that by looking around and not languaging. And notice, my God, in the absence of language, I don't know who I am. I don't know where I am. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I am completely lost. I can still declare I am, but that's languaging. So notice that I amness is the first bit of languaging. Is there anything prior to I am? Not anything in the sense that, um, that we normally think of. But I am arises. It arises from where I am was not. Where I did not know myself. And then I came to know myself. And I said, I am. You check with yourself. You can say with a degree of conscience, of, of, of with a degree of confidence, you can say, I am, but you don't know what you are. 
drop the languaging, drop it, suspend the languaging. Are there, without language, are there countries? Without language, are there any borders? If you look on a geographic globe where it's got the political, a political globe where it's got all the boundaries laid out, and within each set of boundaries, there'll be a word. <laughs> I'm languaging. And in, 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 in the middle of this one, it says United States. United States of America. That's languaging. That's describing a concept that I have and that I want you to get straight because the United States, in my mind, is the center of the world. And I think Russia should recognize that. <laughs> Strangely, it does not. They, 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 fools think they're the center of the world. Then I don't think they're the center of the world, but I recognize their boundaries because if we go over their boundaries, they're going to pound us. And if they come over ours, we're going to pound them. That's what you do. Somebody goes over your boundaries, you whip them. What boundaries are those? They're the boundaries that we have invented with language. In the absence of language, there's no yin yang. There's no polar opposite. There's no black and white, there's no zero and one, there's no yes and no, or male and female, tall or short. All of that's languaging. We just break it down and break it down and break it down and break it down. Just languaging. In ancient Greece, the, the, the sophist, the sophist taught rhetoric, and what they what they learned, rhetoric was it was very important because ancient Greece was a very um, participatory society. You know, they had juries of five hundred. <laughs> That's a pretty good group. So, since they were doing so much and they were governing in groups, how you could present you were going to any courts and stuff like that. How you could present yourself and your case was very, very important. And some of the wiser languagers saw that. And so they began to develop the use of language so that what they could do was they could go into a situation and in the course sort of way, they would dazzle them with bullshit. That's what they would do. It wasn't what they were saying. It was how they were saying it. They just dazzle you so much. They just get you so caught up that you just, well, they win because I don't know what's going on, right? But they sound, they sound so convincing. See, they were not, but they were not telling the truth. That's the, the and you know, Socrates just couldn't stand them. I think that he was pretty, was a little too hard on them. Plato was, Socrates, Aristotle. But I understand their position. They were the, they thought themselves to be the true philosophers. And I happen to agree with them. <laughs> but I just think the sophists had a little something to say. I don't know that we should just write them off. The sharper and sharper use of language is a way that we can get closer to truth, as I'm trying to do with all of this languaging. or it's the way that we can move away from truth, which is what we're doing in the everyday world. Suspend language. Look around. What do you see? You don't know. What's going on here? You don't know. What are you? You don't know. What should be going on here? You don't know. And at that point, you're out of gas because in the absence of arguments, do you even exist?
Is there a world in the absence of resistance? There's no Fred, no Fred, no languaging, no world, no problem. These are not word games. You can stop and notice the room around you and you can go in, you can notice, just stand, stay in the wonder. You don't have to give yourself a verbal guidance like I've been doing. Just right now, drop the use of languaging. Just throw it away and experience this moment. Instant shift. Instant clouding of the borders of everything. Use it for 10 minutes. Use it for one minute. Use it for five seconds. When you expose yourself, when you Strip away language. You're exposing yourself to clarity. You're exposing yourself to truth. You're just noticing your true nature, which is this without language. You can go deeper than that some other day, but that's far enough. Trust me. That's plenty far. Are you screwing up without language? Are you too tall without language? Are you too short without language? Are you late without language? Are you beautiful without language? Are you ugly without language? Are you rich without language? Are you poor without language? I want you to work with this. You'll find it to be very helpful. Stay in touch. Bye-bye.